everybody. Welcome to Soapbox. I'm your host, Mickey Angeline, and tonight we have a great show lined up for you. But before we get started, we'd like to give a little shout out to our sponsors for the show tonight. First off, Pieces Pizza by the Slice, including low fats, vegan, and gluten free options, as well as fine selection of beer, wine, and soft drinks. We thank them for keeping us fueled here by supplying pizza for the crew. To pick up your own, go to 1309 21st Street in Sacramento, or you can call to pick up your order at 916-441-1949. Also, the Humor Times. The Humor Times calls itself the world's funniest news source. The monthly political humor magazine is available worldwide by subscription, in print or digital format. Their motto is, don't cry about the news, laugh about it with Humor Times. Cartoons, funny fake news, videos, and more info can be found at humortimes.com. Dot com. And also, Soapbox is excited to announce that they now have a YouTube channel, so you can catch their episodes online at Soapbox Sacramento, so check that out. So now let's get started with the show. I'm excited to introduce our first guest, Gabriel Silva. He's the activist for CIRA of 2016. Gabriel, thank you so much for being on the show today. Oh, it's a pleasure. Thank you for having me. So we're going to go right into this. I'm really excited myself. So CIRA, what exactly is CIRA? Uh, CIRA is a statewide ballot initiative that uh, it states an acronym that stands for the California Initiative Referendum and Recall Reform Act of 2016. So pretty much what that is, it's a modernization of those three processes. But a lot of people don't know what these processes are. They're um, you know, inter the people introducing law, the people um, stopping law, like referendums, they put it on a uh, ballot for people to vote, and recall is um, firing politicians. So uh, what we're trying to do here is we're trying to modernize them. They were adopted into uh, California law uh, way back in 1911, so like over a century ago. So what we're trying to do is modernize, you know, with all the modern, you know, technology we have nowadays. We're banking online. We're registering to vote online. So everything's so, being done online. Yeah, now. yeah. So that's kind of what so we're doing. So then, why not? This is the next step. Yeah. Um, well, so the importance, uh, the importance of this is, you know, it's going to give a lot of people equal access to, um, you know, participate. And there's a lot of people in rural areas or disabled people or, um, you know, overseas veterans that don't have access to circulators to sign these petitions and stuff. And, uh, you know, another thing that happens a lot is, you know, people don't really have time. We're all so busy nowadays. We don't have time, you know, when you're coming out of the grocery store and someone comes up to you with all these uh, clipboards and petitions and stuff like that. Oh, yes. Yeah, so there's... I've had that happen once or more. Yeah, you, <laughs> you, don't really, you don't really know what they're talking about in that 30 seconds that you give them, you know, so... You're right. There really is not enough time to get your point across. I mean, because now with voting, it's you can go to your poll place, you can mail it in. Yeah. But the option to vote online, that's... The, the, you would think the natural next step. Absolutely. But it's not happening. So why, why is this important? Why is Syria important? Uh, there's a multitude of reasons why. Um, a very important you know, reason why this you know, is because it was intended for the people to use. And uh, it, right now, it's only being used by wealthy special interest groups. You know, a grassroots initiative hasn't been uh, successful since like the 80s. So, you know. We have to, we need to be represented. Uh, this this has to be an effective process for us, and we're actually really lucky because um, not all the states in the United States have these processes available to them. So, what do you mean by the wealthy few? Uh, well, elaborate what, on that. What happens? <laughs> what happens is, um, you know, there's special interest groups that have a lot of money raised, you know, and so what they do is they pay signature gatherers to go out. These people they get paid per signature, you know, sometimes around five dollars a signature. Um, it, it, you know, plus or minus, just like any you know industry. But um, they will go out, and they're not always truthful with people, or you know, so they're just their their idea is that you know their mission is to get these signatures and you know there's you not know, really much say, oversight. If they're, if they're fueled by getting paid to do it uh -huh. so there's the opportunity of fake faking signatures, doubling signatures, Oh, yeah. Right? So if you have six petitions and you get someone to sign one, who's to say that you don't just copy their information to all the petitions? Oh, uh, that's a good you point. Know, I, I was actually on a forum and some uh, a paid petition gatherer or a signature gatherer um, brought that to my attention. I was like, wow, this is really um, a great area here with not really much oversight. 
Um, another issue that happens is um, like thousands of signatures are thrown away. There's validity issues. Um, you know, sometimes people sign. They can. There's many reasons why they. Um, throw these signatures out. Throw them away. Yeah, yeah, so like if they put their address um, that they used to, you know, use to register to vote, not their current one, okay. um, that they're currently registered to vote under, um, they cross, they'll throw that signature out. And what ends up happening is um, a lot of these it depends on what, you know, process you're using, whether you're using the initiative or the referendum or the recall. Um, there could be, you know, half a million signatures required to get something qualified for the ballot. And instead of, they don't have, you know, the time and everything to check 500,000 signatures. So um, what they do is they'll take a pool, a pool of them and they'll take a sample and they'll check the signature. So if they get a certain percentage of maybe just that 20,000, they'll apply it to the 500,000, you know, figuratively speaking. And so um, you, one signature end up costing you thousands of signatures. And so something like Sierra in place, uh, was, yeah, it helps. Get rid it, of that. It could definitely, um, it could reduce some cost to taxpayers as well. It could, it could uh, get rid of okay, that. Okay, now validity. you're talking. We're reducing taxes. Yeah. Okay. How, <laughs> you know, how, how would we do that? Oh, because what happens is you go on the Secretary of State, we propose on this um, initiative that um, the signature is protected under state law just as it was your, your, your regular signature. And keep in mind, these signatures are already on file at DMV. They're already being used by several different agencies within our government. That You're talking about like my signature? Your signature your that's your on your signature. driver's license. You know, wow. your ID. Um, they're already being used. So we're just asking that they be used to affix to a initiative referendum or recall petition. And when you, when you go onto the Secretary of State website where they will host this, um, and they're in charge of um, putting this into place. So you would enter your information and prove that you are you. And, you know, there wouldn't be any double signature issues or, or validity issues like that. And another thing that uh, Sura proposes and requires is uh, ongoing signature tally. So you can keep track of your initiative referendum or recall, um, see how many signatures it's gathering, how much support it has, and where you're at in the process. Online. But the really cool thing that I like is that you'll be able to see the pros and cons because like I said, when you're coming out of the grocery store, you don't always know what they're talking about, if they're being truthful, or you don't have time to really you know, analyze what it, what it is that they're asking you to sign for. So you would take the time out of the comfort of your home to go online and research it and get the pros and cons. Just like you do whenever you go vote on a ballot measure you know, or something, you, know, right. you get the pros and the cons. But at, with a petition, you don't really get that. You just get the language on the petition. And you know you have to sit there and read it, and kind of you don't really know. And you're not sure if that yeah. person's just trying to pitch something to you. Absolutely. A lot of people, and you're right. Like whenever I've come out of the grocery store, and I have people, do you have a moment? And I'm like, no, I don't. You know, and mm -hmm. typically I don't, but often it's because I, I honestly, I will feel a little uncomfortable. I won't lie. Yeah. So there's something like this. Now I know, I've talked to a lot of younger people, young people, and I ask them if they voted. A lot of times they say no. And main reason is is because they don't feel their vote counts. They don't feel oh, that yeah. their voice is heard. Would you say something like this in place? Oh, absolutely. Would change absolutely. opinions, encourage, especially our youth, to vote? Absolutely. Uh, that's, that's a real problem that we have nowadays is that people, they don't really feel like their voice counts. And, um, you know, like I said, that this hasn't been uh, successful since like the 80s for our grassroots regular people, you know, doing, using these processes hasn't been successful since like the 80s. So... Um, with this in place, it would make the processes more effective. What I always say is it makes them more effective, more transparent, and gives equal access. There's those three things right there. It just revolutionizes the whole political process. Right now, it, this with Syria in place, it would give people a political seat at the table. You know, we'll, okay. we would have a voice that was actually effective. Um, if our legislatures, they were worried about us recalling them and we have an effective means to do it, I think it might change things a little bit. Um, for instance, did you hear about that case um, where um, the judge, they want to recall him, um, the judge out of the Santa Brock Clara. Turner. Brock Clay. Turner case. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's, a, that's kind of on a lot of people's minds. He definitely, um, the rape case you're referring to. Yeah. Actually, let me rephrase that. The sexual assault case. Yeah. The yeah. former swimmer out at Stanford, right? Yes. And, uh, yeah, he was um, convicted. He was drunk and assaulted a young girl. Mm -hmm. And the judge, where he should have gotten 14 years, wanted to give him six months. Disgusting. Three months with good behavior. 
So you're saying, of course, everyone's in an uproar with that. You're saying if this were already in place, what would have ha what would happen? Okay, so lay that out. Yeah, so right now, you, uh, Change.org has a petition to recall this judge, which I think his name is Aaron Persky. Correct. Um, he, so they they they've gained almost a million and a half signatures. Well, they would only need like ninety. Uh, approximately like 97,000 what I've seen um, in the approximate ballpark to recall this judge but people don't understand that you can't fill out an online petition for a recall right now it's just literally like a poll um, and so it doesn't really do anything but show support and it tries to put pressure on our legislatures well this is the people's way of going around our representatives to make something happen that we're waiting for them to do that they're not doing so if, if this was in place, those signatures would have been well over the amount needed to qualify um, for a special election in 2017 to recall this judge. So what, so what this wow. will do is uh, that's how powerful Syria is. It will okay. allow the people to make a change without um, you know, doing rallies. I mean, I've attended several rallies in the last month, and, and just, you know, there's a lot of uh, political turmoil going on. It's election year, so yeah. people are, oh, you yeah. know, like, you know, there's the ballot, um, the voting issues going on with Bernie Sanders and, the, and all those types of issues. If people want to change that, Sura gives them the vehicle to do it. You know, I was going to say, I mailed mine in. My mother and I, we mailed our, our votes in, and uh, there's a website that you can go to if you want to see where your ballot is at. And it was like three days after, and it still hadn't been counted. Wow. According to this website. Now, I don't know how accurate the website is, but it didn't make me feel like really good about our system in place. Whereas, Sarah, online, done. Done. And, and you, like you said, there would be the transparency of it. You would be able to see it on the website. Oh, absolutely. That it's being done. Yeah, and so the fiscal impact report, um, they said that it would cost um, a lot of money initially to get the systems in place, and um, but after you know the longevity of it already being in place, it would right. pay for itself, and it actually could stimulate the economy because um, it would generate more more these uh, a lot of times like uh, you know the Gavin Newsom you know. Um, a gun gun control bill. Oh, um, so that it, one too, yes. So, like, these things get passed. They get the signatures and qualified without anybody knowing about it. Well, if, if they were to launch, uh, if Sura was in place, they would launch um, more marketing campaigns, and there would be more TV ads, more radio ads, and there would be more stuff so that people can, uh, you know, be aware and go share this link and go sign and stuff like that. So it actually would generate business. Is, that was in the fiscal impact report as well. So then right now with the goal of where it's at, are you you're wanting to have this put into place as of 2016, 2017? Like, where is it at right now? Well, um, as of right now, it would qualify for the 2018 ballot unless okay. there was a special election in 2017. Then it would be on that ballot. So we're looking one or two years away. Yeah, and then it and then it would be uh, six months if, if if it's voted in. It would be have to be implemented within six months. And it's kind of ironic because they give us six months to collect these signatures. So the proponent, Mike Liddell, he's a he's just a chiropr he's a chiropractor, regular guy like us. You know, he's a father. He teaches baseball and basketball. And he's a coach. You know, and he he's seen these systems. Uh, we worked on a referendum together, and, and you know, we wanted to change how these processes were dealt with. And so he paid for it out of his own money. And, and, and the, price, the price went up from $200 to $2,000 this year to file one of these. Really? Yeah. That's quite a so, jump. So this is a pure grassroots movement right here. This is just regular people wanting to make a difference. You know? um, and if anybody else out there wants to get involved, they could go to syraof2016.com. That's C-I-R-R-R-A of 2016.com. And we have um, we have petitions available at hubs all throughout California right now. Okay. Um, there's links on there to we're on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and there's all this social media really all important. All social media and uh, there's Facebook groups that are made specific, county specific for all counties in uh, California. You can go to find your county link on the website and join your county and get involved. You can sign up to be a hub, sign up to gather signatures, and you know kind of feel the process. Um, the more the more you get involved, the more you understand why it needs to be modernized. 
You know, a um, lot of times, you know, these property management companies and, you know, grocery stores, they don't know that it's your right to petition. So um, cops will get called on these people and they'll come out um, and they'll, the, the police will say, hey, well, we're not going to get involved. It's their right to petition, you know. Because um, they're they're confusing it with loitering. Yes, yeah, correct. That's that's this is what this, it sounds like. This is far out how far out of touch we've gotten with the system that uh. people don't even understand their rights, their rights to petition. You know, so it's not like you're sitting there. Um, you know, you're trying to monetarily gain off this or anything right. like that. So we're hoping that um, these property management companies will actually back this too, because then they won't have the problem of people standing up right out in front of their stores. You know. you know, and also, too, because I know you've seen this a lot. I mean, we have Facebook. And I don't know about you, I get tired of seeing the endless rants all day long, oh, yeah. every day. Oh, yeah. People sitting behind the keyboards complaining about, mm -hmm. complaining about our nation oh, yeah. and the leaders and how it's being run or not run properly. La, 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 la. Well, it's, I feel like you're right. Get off from behind the keyboard. Get out from behind the TV. Get out there and do something. Take action. Take action. Like, I just learned from you. I didn't know this because I have to admit I'm a little bit ignorant when it comes to this sort of thing that it is our right to actually petition. Yeah. It's our own voice. We've been, I think, as a society, we've been just, we've just been told that it doesn't, it doesn't matter or too much is going on behind the scenes. Your one little voice doesn't matter. And yeah. you and I know it's the opposite. Yeah. There's so many of us out there that are not participating in mm -hmm. our duty, I feel it's a duty. Absolutely. All right. So then, now of course this, there are people that probably don't have access to internet. They still would be able to Absolutely. go to polls and vote, right? They'd still be able to mail it in though, I don't know. Yeah, I'll be honest, I don't know if I trust it being yeah, mailed in. Yeah, is, is that, there's I just a downloadable PDF yeah. that they can still download, sign. It really depends on what the proponent selects. Uh, if we're not taking away the old method. Okay, um, so, that's good to know. So the current method would still be in place if a proponent chose to use it. Um, they could still go out and use the paper method. Um, you know, so there's just so many um, gray areas with the paper method that we felt that this would make it far more effective for the people, you know, so. You sound like you've been doing this quite a long time, Gabriel. Yeah, I've researched it extensively and I've actually used these processes, so yeah. I'm experienced at it. And I've, um, I've experienced being out there in front of grocery stores and setting up booths and, and being at events. And now you even, let's touch back on that because you mentioned you've been to rallies, yeah. right? Since pre, obviously, June 7th. Yeah. Um, and how many have you been? Like, how far have you covered? Is it just in California? Have you been outside of California? Um, well, I, I stay in California, okay. but I've been all over California to rallies, um, getting involved in various different groups, you know, and, and this is what's really cool about Sura is that it is very, it's neutral. So have it's you had an opportunity change. to talk with people while you're at these rallies about this? Yes. And what was your overall what was your overall response? It's been actually well received. I mean, it's very easy to get signatures opposed to other referendums that I've been involved in initiatives and stuff like that because it's just really a process change and it makes sense. It's like it's time, you know, we can buy houses online. We can do all the stuff. We are on social media all the time. Our information's there. Right. The information that we're asking to be used is already being used by the by other people. Yeah. You mentioned that earlier, like our signature at the DMV. Yeah. So, so government, others have a right to use their signature, but apparently we don't. Yeah. And that's what that's what this will change. Yeah. Is a right to our own signature to be able to use online. Yes, to use now, our own information. I, I'm already thinking in my head, mistakes can be made, falsifying, fraudulent. How would that how would that be taken care of so that it was you who was online doing it and not somebody else? Okay. Right. Yeah. Well, okay. Well, and it's inherent in anything that you know. Since the beginning of time, there's always been you know people trying to cheat and you know go around the system. And this is pretty much our fix to the current method. And um, the information that's online, because the only there's only been like you know out there researching you know and talking to people and how they feel. The one thing that people would ask about is if it could be hacked or the system could be Correct. hacked and stuff like that. That is a concern. Well, right now um, we've talked to many different um, organizations in Silicon Valley, and I've talked to uh, county registers. I've talked to you know 
all different types of people. I've been to different types of conventions, and and it seems to be like the common consensus from all tech people that um, the its system's already really in place. It's already being used, and it hasn't been hacked. It hasn't been an issue. And you know, it's a lot of the Silicon Valley doesn't even know about the system or what how they're doing it and how it's being used um, to register to vote. For instance, you're already registering to vote online. It's that exact same system. Okay. So it's very similar to that, you know. Um, there, so I, there's not really any risk that anybody expressed any concern about as far as on the professional tech level that we've talked to. And I'm guessing that something will put be put in the place that you can't duplicate your vote online. Oh right? yeah, absolutely. The, you know, I mean, they're not going to let you go in there and enter your information twice. Because you've already mentioned that would how be fraud. you know, well, you, correct. But you mean you've already mentioned how when people go out and collect the physical signature, and now I'm like thinking in the back of my head back in the day when I would do that, because you're right, you would put all your personal information where you leave your phone number, yeah. and you're just handing it over to some stranger you don't know. Yeah. Here, and then trusting them to do the right thing with it. Yeah. Mind and blown. That, that brings up another point. <laughs> right. You know, um, there, there's people that would not be in favor of a certain initiative. Who's to say they didn't go sign a bunch of petitions all over the place just to get a lot of signatures disqualified? You know, to say. you know, so I mean, not that we're pointing fingers, so we're mean, just saying. Yeah, we're just saying there's many different, um, you know, many different problems with the current system that need to be fixed, and that's that's pretty much you know what we're getting at. And I think that this is a really solid fix for it. Um, and you know, we're promoting all over the state right now. We have a lot of things, um, a lot of events and rallies and stuff that we're we're a part of that we're collecting, and we we've been well received. We're you know we're neutral. We're just trying to get a voice for everybody. We're trying to strengthen the voice of the people. Absolutely, and to give people a sense of like th that their vote does matter. To make them feel good about it. To make them excited about wanting to be a part of the system. Yeah, You absolutely. know, especially with what's currently going on today, right? Yeah. It's, yeah, I, I think um, if people knew, I mean, I have friends that honestly, I had one friend where her concern was more um, purchasing a truck that she could, uh, that she could, you know, hem me up versus going out to a rally like when um, Bernie first came uh -huh. to Sacramento and a chance to want to go to that or when Trump came and I think when Hillary came but I don't know if that was open to the public but I mean an opportunity like that to for the youth to not be excited about concerned me greatly oh absolutely um, we have to get them know? motivated and aware I think that that's one thing that's lacking is a civic duty uh, we have to motivate people we have to we every, a lot of people have passion because they're showing passion on social media we have to get them to pair that with action passion plus action equals change so, so we have to motivate the younger generations to get involved and, and help them understand that um, there's a balance of power here and if we don't enforce our rights and we don't use them, we, you know, we'll eventually lose them. So when you talked with um, the people at the rallies, did you um, talk with a lot of young people? There are. It, I mean, I'm sure it was a mix. It, it's a mix. It's mostly, um, you know, I would say people from their 30s on. Okay. So the younger generations, there's just so much distraction nowadays with all the social media stuff, you know. Cell phones, social know, media. Cell phones, you know, the Kardashians. Tinder. Tinder. <laughs> so then, okay, then do you have a plan in place? How would you reach the 18 and over, the 18 to 30? How would you reach them and, and what would you say to them that would make this matter to them and get them excited about wanting? Um, well, we have a plan vote. in place to reach them. So we're getting involved with music. Because ah. because they're in they're into music. You and I know about music. Yes, yes. So so we're <laughs> we're sponsoring um, a lot of concerts throughout California right now. Okay. Yeah, we have one coming up um, July eighth at the Placer County Fairgrounds, and we're gonna have a big um, Stop the Corruption booth there, and we're gonna we get a chance to speak to them. You know, because music has been intertwined with politics, you know, for years. You know, way since like you know. Bob Marley, you know, Jimi Hendrix, like back to the Beatles and even right. farther, you know, it's, it's just, you know, 
it's a relationship that that's been there and we want to uh, re-stimulate that you know we want to bring it back and start talking to these younger crowds and figure out how to get to them because they need to understand that it's this very important for them to be represented all the different demographics we have um, the makeup we have in our society they need to be representative and everybody has to have equal access to that has to have a voice and that's what Sura provides it provides equal access from the comfort of your home or your cell phone man I like the concert thing that's great yeah you know music definitely you know you and I being so active in, in our own music community here yeah. I think that's just the one step more I have high hopes for that oh me too the you know the youth being so easily distracted just I don't know I think maybe I was too when I was younger. I have to admit, when I was younger, it wasn't even it wasn't even important to me that that voting was my duty. Yeah. Not just my right, but my duty. You know, I'm living in the comforts of what happens, or I'm suffering from you know the consequences of what happens, not realizing you know what though, my vote would matter. You can make a difference. Make a difference. One person can make a difference. One. You know, a um, lot of, uh, from my experience, a lot of the um, activism, the motivation to be an activist comes from, you know, parents. Parents talk to your kids about the importance of being involved. Um, you know, get fired up, get passionate about something, and it transcends. Like, you know, if I come in here and I'm just passionate about Sura, you know, you're going to be like, he's fired up about this, you know, and you're going to yeah. tell somebody, oh, it's yeah. going to go to you and it's going to go to who you tell, and that's what we need to do. We need to start the fire, and the fire has been lit, and it's been spreading throughout California. A lot of people are getting involved. Uh, we have a lot of organizations getting involved. We have a really broad demographic, a really uh, diverse mix of people involved with Sura. So then I want to say thank you. We're ending the show and for being such a great guest. Awesome. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Make sure to visit the website. And once again, I want to mention um, Soapbox now has a YouTube channel, Soapbox Sacramento. Make sure to check that out and this show and other great shows. Thank you so much. That was good. We're so supposed to talk. Susan, but not smart. You lived your life so much in fantasy that reality never had a chance. I want to be free. 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 I want to be free.